there are at least 11,000 torture survivors in San Diego. That means that a person's child is in school with a torture survivor. That means that when you go down to your local grocery store, you're probably bumping into a survivor. We have torture survivors right in our midst. Mothers and fathers, people in our community. I'm Kathy Anderson, the Executive Director of Survivors of Torture International. We are the only organization of our kind here in San Diego. Nobody else directly serves survivors of torture. The fact is, is that they were tortured back home. And when they come into the office, they may not trust people anymore. The torturers have told them implicitly or explicitly the world is evil. No one's going to believe them. I was dead already. Dead people do not talk. When they wanted me to confess, I was hung with my, my arms tied behind. Survivors has served clients from 55 different countries. Torture survivors can and do recover, but they need help to do so. I'm David Gangsey, a psychologist working with survivors. Torture is an interpersonal trauma, and so the healing is also interpersonal. We have what we call a menu of services, and it includes mental health, physical health, legal support, case management, help with basic needs, referrals to resources, cultural, recreational, and social activities. A torture survivor that is not talking about his or her experience, they are still prisoners. My name is Carlos Mauricio, and uh, I was born in El Salvador in a little village named El Aguachapan. I was a professor in the university. After three days of being tortured, I confessed it. I said, okay, I went to Cuba. Don't not torture me anymore. And the torture will confess whatever is asked. It's a, a real, real crime. Torture is a crime. They're not victims of torture, they are survivors of torture. Because we are here, we're able to provide the assistance that they need to build that trust, to be safe, and to have a whole life again filled with dignity and not shame. They can begin to integrate and be good taxpayers, be good moms and dads, and contribute to our society. Physical wounds may heal somehow. The real difficulties uh, arise from the mind, you know, the, 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 the memories. Longest lasting and most severe effects of torture are psychological. And those effects tend to be things like uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and depressive disorder. I would say that the most important a uh, single component of our program is its focus on recovery. And in part, we've learned that focus from our clients. It's what they want to talk about, it's what they're committed to, and it's what they accomplish with the support that we provide. Having programs like that help us to find out exactly what happened to us. Sensitizing professionals in the community, raising the awareness, 
helping them to understand that in fact they might be working with a torture survivor and what that means is incredibly important. Nationwide, the numbers of people actually gaining political asylum is very low. Here, the rate is much, much higher, in large part due to our services. I do love to teach. It's my life. I'm a teacher again. I'm a high school teacher. I see them experience joy again. I see them come alive. I love being a part of a community of healing and hope. The thing that keeps me going the most is the recovery and resilience of the clients. It's not true. Torture is not about gathering information. Torture is another way of repression. Torture is to bring terror on the population. It's never okay to torture. We all have gifts that we can lend to this work. It might be as a professional, a physician, a therapist, an attorney. It might be somebody who could serve on our board of directors. It might be someone who would volunteer to be a driver or to work as an interpreter. It might be someone who donates chocolate at our annual event. It might be somebody who donates funds uh, to support the work that we do.